Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is another tricky question. Bosh, let's do it. Okay, um, we've got this lovely looking curve. Uh, figure four shows the sketch with this equation, and it says find dx by dy, giving your answer as a fully simplified fraction. So notice this is dx by dy, which means we're gonna be differentiating with respect to y. So differentiating the left-hand side with respect to y, well, that's just one lot of, and then dx by dy. Um, now this is going to need the old quotient rule. So the u variable is the one on top. So that is 2y squared plus 6. And the v variable is the one on the bottom, which is 3y minus 3. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is differentiate both. So this is going to give me 4y. And when I differentiate this one, this is going to give me 3. Okay, so how does the quotient rule work? Well, it starts with v, which is this one. So I write this here. And then I multiply that by du by in this case dy, so times that by 4y. And then I always subtract, and it's u, which is this one, multiplied by dv, which is 3. And that's all divided by v squared, so 3, mi 3y minus 3 squared. Okay, right, looks like we've got some tidying up to do. Uh, it does say it's a fully simplified fraction. So multiplying out these brackets, I'm going to get 12y, um, uh, 12y squared. I'm going to get minus 12y. And I'm going to get minus 6y squared and minus 18. And that again is all over 3y minus 3 squared. Okay, so the top line becomes 6y squared um, minus 12y minus 18. And I can see here that there's a factor of 3 and there's also a factor of 3 in here as well. Um, but we have to be very careful uh, because when we pull out a factor of 3 from the bottom, because it's squared, we have to pull out actually a factor of 3 squared. So uh, in doing so, let me just write this out like this. So out of here comes 3 squared, which is 9. So 9 comes out and, that, that, and then that allows us to divide by 3 inside the square bracket like that. Because when you pull out a factor of 3, because you're pulling out of a square bracket, you have to pull out 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, so now we can divide uh, everything by 3. So we get 2y squared minus 4y minus, uh, um, minus 6, all over three lots of y minus one all squared. And I think that is the best we can do. Um, I mean, technically, sorry, we could also factorize out a two here, like this, aha, yes. I see what's happening here. God, this is like an algebraic fractures question from GCSE. This can be uh, factorized. So what do we get when we factorize that? Well, we will get um, y minus uh, 3, y plus 1. <clears throat> oh, we can't simplify that any further. Okay, fair enough. That's it. Okay, yeah, that's our final answer. Bit disappointed we couldn't do a bit more cancelling, but oh well. Um, let me clear some space and we'll do part B. Okay, back. 
the tangents at the points P and Q on the curve are parallel to the y-axis. And this is why I've chosen this question, because lots of people make this mistake when we talk about curves being parallel to the y-axis. Use your answer to find the equation of these two tangents. Okay, so when a curve is parallel to the y-axis, it means that when the, um, the dx by dy is equal to zero. So in this case, we do have dx by dy. So it's the two y minus three x plus one that needs to equal to zero. Now, a lot of the time, we actually have dy by dx. And when we do have dy by dx, we have to take the reciprocal and set that equal to zero if we are looking for parallel to the y-axis. But this time, we actually have the reciprocal already. We have dx by dy, so we can just set that equal to zero. So it's the numerator that we need to make sure is equal to zero. So this gives me y equals three and y equals minus one. Um, okay, so it says find the equation of these two tangents. Um, now, these are, we need to find the corresponding um, x values. So we need to substitute these into our equation here in order to find our x values. So we get x equals um, two lots of 3 squared plus 6 all over 3 lots of 3 minus 3. And this gives us 18 plus 6, so 24 on top, and 9 minus 3, which is 6 on the bottom, so that gives me x equals 4. And we'll do the same for minus 1, so we get 2 lots of minus 1 squared plus 6 all over three lots of minus one minus three. So this gives me uh, two plus six, so eight on top and minus six on the bottom. So this one is going to be minus four over three. And those are our tangents because they're vertical tangents. They're going to be of the form X equals. So we get X equals four and X equals negative four over three. Okay, hope you found that useful. Bye for now.